Good morning, Lighthouse. Welcome to another message, another church online. It is uh, May the 10th, and uh, so glad that you have joined with us today. Uh, this is the new normal, I guess. Uh, we had a, an elders' Zoom meeting this last week, and really just to look at the way ahead, given that uh, it's going to probably be some months before we're able to resume normal church activities, and particularly uh, Sunday services. So just one or two things that we want you to know by way of announcements. Uh, firstly, we're going to be looking at getting or upgrading our CCLR license, which means that we'll be able to do some worship as part of uh, our services. We didn't think we would need that initially if the lockdown was only going to be three weeks, um, but we do think that it will be a worthwhile investment, which means that uh, maybe from next week, it just depends how soon we can get it, uh, part of our worship service would be that we could go to Kewan's house and he could lead us from the comfort of his own home. Uh, in a few songs of worship. So we're really looking forward to that. We're going to get the ball rolling there. Um, and then we're also going to explore ways in which we can stay connected, in which uh, in ways that we can grow together, uh, looking at doing something maybe midweek uh, for the communities to, uh, to do together, to share together, maybe a Bible study. Uh, Connection puts out a video once a week. Obviously, Kieran's in touch with Firehouse. And so there's this resemblance of church uh, online it's not what we like and it's not what we used to, but it is what uh, we are going to get used to over the next couple of months. So, so bear with us. Uh, we, we, we're excited about this. The staff and the elders are, are looking at, um, at this and so we're really, really excited. So watch the space. Follow us on Facebook. Um, stay tuned. Look at the website. Uh, we, will, we will do our best to um, update you as things, as things progress. And please don't forget as well to, to give our church banking details if you don't have them or on the website. Uh, I know this is a stretching time for all of us, but we really want to be able to honor all our commitments to our missions in particular, to, to people in need, and obviously the, uh, the running expenses of the church. And so uh, and this is an opportunity for us to, to put faith in action, to really trust God, to be generous, and to sow into, into His kingdom. And in doing so, uh, stir our own faith to trust God, to, uh, to see us through and provide for us as He has promised to do. So today is a very special day, and uh, Kim's going to take us through it. So today is Mother's Day, and we just want to wish all our women a happy Mother's Day. And Amen. thank you for all the mothering that you do in whatever capacity, whether it is, an, is as an aunt, a grandmother, um, looking after a neighbor's kids, um, spoiling a friend's children, whatever capacity it is. Um, our teachers, we want to honor you for all the extra hard work you're doing at the moment as well. And Percy has made a special card. I hope you can see it. You worked very hard on that. Um, but I just want to, to speak a little bit to our kids about honoring. You know, the Bible says we must honor our moms and dads. Honoring means making someone, putting someone up as, as seeing them as very special, seeing them as very important. And I want you today to think about things that your mom or your aunts or your grandmother or the special ladies in your life are doing for you. And it would be really great if you could tell them about those things. Maybe send a voice note or video call gran or um, phone your aunt or um, send a message to your teacher and just let them know how much you appreciate the things that they do for you. And then to all the women in, our, in, in, in Lighthouse, thank you for what you do. I've been reminded this week of how we as women are the, thermo are the thermostats in our lives and not the thermometers. We don't measure the temperature in our homes, we set the temperature. So I want to encourage you this week going forward, as our emotions are also up and down with, with what's going on around us and we try and keep things calm and keep everybody doing what they need to be mm. doing, um, keep, make sure that you're in a good place. Dig deep into God. Get, make sure that He is your source is keeping you strong so that you can set the temperature in your home and keep things stable. But know that we are praying for you. It's not an easy season, but I just want to honor you for what you are doing because I know you're doing a good job. So let's let's pray. Can we pray for our moms? Yeah. Father, we just thank you for, for giving us women to love us and encourage us and nurture us. Thank you for all the, the ladies in our lives that give us so much. And I pray today that you would just encourage, uplift, and nourish each of us, Father God. That you would give us what we need to stay strong in this season. And that you would, as, as your children, you would just give us um, everything we need for today. 
I pray your blessing over each mom at Lighthouse, each grand, each aunt, each woman who is nurturing in Jesus' name. Amen. Moms, we've got a little surprise for you. Enjoy this. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mommy. What the thing I love about you is when you do stuff for us. And I love you because you, 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 you're you so special to us. Yeah. Bye, Mama. Bye, Mommy. Love you. Love you. Happy. Happy. Say Mother's. Mother's. Day. Day. Yay. Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Go. I, my, hello, Mom. I like you all the way to the moon and back 100 times. Bye-bye. Hi, Mommy. I, I love you to the oldest tree in the whole wide world and back 2,000 times. Bye-bye. Hello, Mom. Love you. Thank you for caring for me, helping me, and looking after me. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. Bye. Anything else, monkeys? Mm. <laughs> we love you, you, you higher than the sky. Oh. We love you higher than the sky. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you for all that you've done for me in school and life in general. I appreciate all that you've done for me and I love you lots. Thank you, Mom, for everything you've done for me and making me food and making sure I pass the year. And thank you for all that you've done for working for us so we can have money to have a house and more. I love you so much and I hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. There are so many different reasons why I love my mom. But the best reason is because she loves me. I love, I love my mom because she makes soup for me and brother. Oh, that's nice. And let's pass it in. Very that's nice. Very nice, Janet. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy, and thank you for all you're doing for Jelly Bean and I love you. Hello, Mommy. Um, thanks for everything you do for me. I love you. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much and I hope you have an amazing day. Mwah. Happy Mother's Day, I love you a lot. I hope you have a nice day. Happy Mother's Day! So, it's great to be able to bring the Word of God uh, to us again today. Uh, I know I've been sitting down while I've been sharing the Word of God the last couple of weeks on my couch at home. I just felt like I wanted to get up and preach again. So I've got a music stand uh, and uh, you can see me, I can't see you, uh, but we're going to go for it anyway. So. On my heart forward today, uh, God led me to Psalm 23. And kind of what, what I felt was, it's kind of almost back to basics. In, in this time of, um, of, of such pressure and, and such abnormality in terms of everyday life, uh, I just think sometimes it's good to go back to the basics. That which we know. Psalm 23 is probably one of the best known passages of scripture around. Most people, most Christians can, can recite it. Uh, and, and I just thought it'd be good for us just to anchor ourselves again in the old truths that we know so well from, from Psalm 23. I don't think it's time to complicate our faith. Most of us are just hanging in there, trying to, to just be positive every day, trying to, to make the plans that we need to, to adjust uh, as, um, as circumstances demand. And so Psalm 23, I think, really speaks to that. It encourages us. I know it's a psalm that is often used at, at funerals and, and, and so on, but I think in a, in a wider sense, it is very much applicable to everyday life, in particular, these times in which we live at the moment, the, the deep waters that we, are, that we are going through. And what, what struck me, what I want to highlight today, is the, the revelation of God 
that comes through Psalm 23. I think we all know the gist of the psalm pretty well. But there are two revelations of, of God's nature and God's heart that I want to zoom in this morning for our encouragement. I know we've been talking a lot about faith and how to have faith, holding on to faith. We've been talking about perspective. We've been talking about praying and, and all the important things that we need to do to hold on to God. And our thought for today is really just to, let's, let's look at the one that we're holding on to. Let's, let's look at the God that we have put our trust in to see us through these challenging and difficult times. So let's read Psalm 23 together. Maybe you want to close your eyes, just allow the word of the Lord to, to refresh your heart and your, refresh your mind. And then uh, now I'll share some thoughts. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when we break the psalm down, you'll see that the first revelation that we have of God is that He is our shepherd. That God is our shepherd. David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Which is an interesting departure from the usual metaphors that God uses for, uh, that David uses for God, rather, throughout the Psalms. He talks about God as king, the Lord God Almighty. He talks about deliverer. Uh, he sometimes even uses the more inanimate descriptions of refuge and, and rock and, and so on. Here is one of the, the few times that David actually uses a far more personal metaphor for God. The Lord is my shepherd. And because you've probably heard Psalm 23 preached on many, many times, you've probably heard before that there is a big difference between the shepherds of uh, Jesus' time or the Old Testament, and even shepherds today in the, in the Middle East, and the kind of shepherds that you would see uh, in the Eastern Cape or the Karoo. What you'd find there would be shepherds that often would um, drive the sheep, uh, maybe shouting and, and banging the ground, maybe with sheepdogs, a farmer, and, uh, and they, would, they would kind of drive the sheep to where they wanted them to go. Not so with shepherds in the Middle East. Shepherds in the Middle East have a, a much uh, smaller flock. So there's a flock of sheep, eh? Can't remember. Uh, a, a, much smaller, a much smaller flock of sheep. And the reason why they do that is so that they might know every sheep personally. They often name the sheep. That's why Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Um, and I know my sheep, my sheep hear my voice. And so, and so she, uh, shepherds in the, in the Middle East, they, they are accustomed to getting to know their sheep really, really well. They can pick up when they're sick. Uh, they can pick up when they're strong and healthy. They know when they need water. They, they're just so, they're so in tune with the needs of their sheep because they, their flocks are smaller and they give this, this intensely personal attention and devotion to the sheep. And so the shepherd... The, the Lord God Almighty, the one who is the shepherd of our souls, he leads us, he guides us, he protects us, he watches over us. And, uh, and the psalm goes on to explain all of that. And especially then in the valley, the valley of death, in the shadow of the valley of death, uh, even then uh, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And, and the interesting thing about the valley of the shadow of death is it actually just means a dark valley, a very, very dark valley. Uh, and so it would have re relevance to, obviously, death, and that's why it's often read at funerals. But it just means a, a dark, deep valley that we're going through. And many of us feel like that at the moment. We just feel like we're in this dark valley, um, and, uh, and it's just negativity from every side. And into that, into that, we find the Lord is our shepherd and our guide. I just find that so encouraging, that I'm not doing this alone, even though often I might feel alone. Uh, I'm not doing this on my own. I'm not walking this journey alone. I've got the Lord, my shepherd, my shepherd, leading me and guiding me through this. And so that brings us a sense of comfort and strength at this time. Because often when we go through the dark valley, if it wasn't for the Lord, we'd go through it alone. People give up. People go, oh, your stuff is just too much for me to carry right now. And, uh, and so we find ourselves very much on our own. But it's so encouraging to know the Lord never leaves us. Uh, he is our shepherd through the darkest of valleys and over the mountaintops. And he leads us through the valley and up the other side where we can, where we can look back and just shout 
in victory and in celebration for how the Lord has, has led us. And then, um, and then it talks about the rod and the staff. The shepherd's rod and the staff. The rod was a defensive weapon. And that was used to, to chase off the predators, to protect the sheep. And so the shepherd would often put his life on the line for the sake of his sheep. That's how seriously he took, he took protecting the sheep. And that's why he always would carry a rod with him. And then there's the staff. And the staff would obviously have a, a crook on the end. And that would be to, to just keep the sheep in line. Sometimes a, a sheep would, would wander off and just need to be pulled back or it would get into a, a difficult um, situation on the edge of a cliff where the shepherd couldn't reach it and he would just be able to reach out with his, his staff and, and pull it back in. And so you see that the one aspect of God's protection over us. I wonder if we could see in the spirit how God is warring on our behalf, um, pushing the devil back as he, as he seeks to just rip into our lives. And even though we may not even be cognizant of, of all his schemes against us, I wonder, I wonder if we could see the good shepherd, our, our shepherd Jesus, fighting on our behalf, protecting us. And then, on the other hand, just gently nudging us, keeping us in line. I know many of us have shared that uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've learned so much about ourselves and feel some of the things have been stripped away. Some of the idols in our hearts have been exposed. Um, and, uh, and, and that in its, itself is a, is a very painful process. But it's a good process because it leads us to wholeness. And it leads us to freedom and it leads us to a, a deeper experience of, um, of God's grace and God's presence uh, in our lives. And so, and so his rod and his staff, they, they comfort me. Why do they comfort me? Because I know that they're there. I know that it, it speaks of the shepherd's engagement in my life with me at all times. And then uh, there's, a, there's a second metaphor that's not mentioned, but it's, it's kind of implied. If the first is a shepherd... And I want to suggest to you that the second metaphor of God in this passage is that of a friend. Because the remainder of the, of the passage, the remainder of the, the chapter, is, is all about this table set before me in the presence of my enemies. Goodness and mercy um, flowing over me all the days of my life. And the interesting thing about the table is that that would have been reserved for somebody very close. Somebody that is welcomed at, at the table. One of the things that the, the Middle East is known for right up until this day, is its hospitality. And so when you're invited into a home, you would be invited to have a meal. Now that's very foreign to us with our kind of Western mindset. But in, in the Middle East, back in ancient times and today, it's very common. In fact, it would be frowned upon in society if you weren't like that. And so that kind of hospitality where you invite people in, and if you invite a person um, to sit with you at a table, that is a sign of, of intimate friendship and fellowship. That is a sign of, of a desire in a close relationship. And so, and so here we have Jesus, God, preparing a table before us. And strangely, it goes on to say, in the presence of our enemies. And, and so not only does God invite us into this friendship, but he's so confident, he's so bold in his, in his ability to protect us and keep us and watch over us that he doesn't mind the fact that our enemies are, are watching I just think it's such an incredible picture of the greatness of God and the security and safety that we have of this. Uh, you know, I always imagine this. I don't know why I imagine this in a field. I imagine myself at a table. Um, God's there. I'm there. And, and all my enemies are kind of, you know, on, the, on this field, but at a distance. And they can't come any closer because God's at the table with me. And, and I don't need to worry about them. They, they're far away. I can see them, but I don't need to give too much attention to them because God's at my table. That's the picture, however you picture it. Um, but that's, that's the image, that he sets the table before us. Our enemies are there, but because God's at the table, we can be okay. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry. We're aware of our enemies. We're aware of fear. We're aware of despair. We're aware of all the stuff that, that's going on. We're, we're not ignorant of, of the enemy's schemes. But in that and through that, we are reminded that God is at our table. He set the table before us. He's invited us to intimate fellowship. He's invited us to friendship. You know, it's, it's more than just a shepherd. It's more than just the one who leads and guides. It's the one who wants to sit down at the table with us. It's the one who invites us to his table, just for fellowship, in the presence of our enemies. And then it goes on to say that, uh, surely goodness, well, before that, um, he anoints my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. His goodness and His mercy. His goodness and His mercy. I know uh, often 
particularly at times like this, we, we doubt God's goodness. We, we just see stuff happening in our lives. We go, God, are you oblivious to our heart cry? And, and where are you, Lord? And we are, we are very prone to, to wonder where, where God's goodness has gone. Maybe we've fallen, fallen foul of him in some way. Maybe, maybe he's not as good as he says he is. I just want to remind you that every, every attempt of the enemy to, to bring fear into life or despair or, or to cause you to question the goodness of God is his attempt to drive a wedge between you and the goodness of God. It just is. And so hold on to that, even though you may not understand what's going on right now. We hold on to the simple truth that God's goodness and his mercy follow us. The word is actually stick to us. Uh, like we can't even shake it off. It follows us all the days, through the valleys, over the mountaintops of our lives. And so we are encouraged by that. We are strengthened by that. And we find hope and we find refuge in that. So I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you uh, this morning. As we look at the psalm and we hold up these two incredible pictures of God, our Lord, our friend, our Savior, our shepherd, shepherd and friend, Focusing on those two, shepherd and friend, the one who guides, leads, the one who knows us by name, the one who is undertaking this journey with us, who is leading us. It's right and staff, they comfort us in this journey through. He'll never leave our side. And the one who invites us to sit at the table of intimate fellowship. The one who, who, who loves just to, just to experience this journey with us, delights in us. Let's take this time to, to worship God as shepherd, to see and picture him leading us, guiding us, to worship God as friend. Thank you. Um, that he is a friend closer than a brother. And it's not always easy to see. I know that. I've battled myself as, yeah, we're, we're all in the same storm. But it's important for us to push through until we see that we are not going to be destroyed by the storm. We're not going to be overcome by the storm. What we're going to do is we're going to dig deep in faith. And that's why I felt today we wanted to just lift up just lift up these attributes of God. Just lift up this revelation of God as shepherd and friend. Um, so that we may be encouraged. That that is what we gaze on. And what we gaze on is what we draw strength from. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing comes from the word of God. And so in, uh, in these challenging times, we dig deep. And we anchor ourselves in truth. And the truth is in a person. And that person is God. Our shepherd and our friend. Let's pray together. God, we just want to thank you today. We remind ourselves that you are indeed shepherd and friend. You are so many other things. But for our purposes today, we just focus on shepherd and friend. We want to thank you, Lord. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. Thank you that as the good shepherd, you lead us every moment of every day. You do not drop us for a second. You are with us. We never escape your grasp. We are never, we are never out of your sight. We thank you, God, that as the good shepherd, you take so seriously your role in leading us and guiding us. And then, Lord God, we thank you that you are our friend, the one closer than a brother, the one who is just always there, who invites us to a table that you have set before us in the presence of our enemies to recline with you and know that we are safe and secure and strengthened in your presence and in that in that love relationship we can relax we can be at peace so God help us to find joy help us to find strength help us to find Lord God purpose even even through these times as we gaze on you and we find hope we find strength we find faith we find rest in you and in you alone and Lord God be our portion today and tomorrow Strengthen us, protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got a list of songs um, that you'll see below. I encourage you to, uh, to listen to them. The goodness of God, uh, we want to worship to that and we want to sing to that. And I know even if you have doubts in your heart, you sing it with faith to say, God, this is what I believe. And you'll see what God starts to do in your heart and strengthen you. God bless you.